earlier we, we looked at the linear function in a fair bit of detail. Now we're going to look at the quadratic function. Now the linear function and the quadratic function, why these two are so important is because every polynomial can be factorized to be a combination of linear functions and quadratic functions. So that's why I guess we look at these two types of functions in a lot of detail. So our quadratic, which of course has a graph, the parabola. So subtle differences. So let's just define these. Quadratic polynomial. Well, if it's just an algebraic expression, notice there's no equal signs, it's just a piece of algebra, ax squared plus bx plus c, technically that's called the quadratic polynomial. If we make it equal to another pronumeral, usually y I suppose is what we see, now it becomes the quadratic function. But if we make it equal to a number, and again with quadratics usually that's equal to zero, then it becomes a quadratic equation. I mean they're all quadratics but technically that's the difference between the three things. Uh, coefficients, well hopefully know, we know what they are. They are the numbers I guess associated with each of the algebraic terms, so in our general expression the a, the b and the c. The indeterminate, it's, it's not a, a word we use a lot I suppose these days, but the indeterminate is the pronumeral because we can't determine what it is. So it's an unknown. So another name for it is indeterminate. Roots. Again, technical difference between roots and something else we'll see in a sec. Roots are solutions to the quadratic equation, whereas zeros are the x-intercepts of the quadratic function. They are, of course, the same thing. And sometimes you'll see people use roots when they mean zeros and zeros when they mean roots. And we say, you know, roots of the equation. No, technically roots of the equation, zeros of the function. All right, find the roots of, and here's an equation. Now, I haven't put this example down to exactly blow your mind. Uh, just using it as an example. So x squared minus 1 equals 0. Ooh, that's tricky. Let's solve that. x squared equals 1. So we get plus or minus 1. So plus or minus 1 are the roots of the equation. That would be the zeros of the, of the function. Okay. So graphing our quadratics. When we draw it up, we know we're going to get a parabola. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now each piece of this tells us something about the parabola. So a, the coefficient of x squared, well that tells us whether we're concave up, or we could think of it as happy. And if we're happy, we're feeling positive. So a is greater than zero. Oh, and that's called concave up. We could be concave down, sad, negative, oh, sad, so A is less than zero, concave down. Now, B by itself doesn't tell us a heck of a lot. We'll come back to B. C, just like in any polynomial, the constant tells us the, the y-intercept. <coughs> The zeros or the roots, so technically it's the zeros of the function, but the roots of the equation, they are the x-intercepts. Now, as I said, b by itself doesn't tell us a lot, but when we combine it with minus and 2a, so minus b on 2a, that tells us the axis of symmetry of the, uh, of the parabola. Now, if you've already found the zeros, then you don't need to use minus b on 2a because, of course, the parabola is a symmetric shape. So it must be the midpoint or the average of the two zeros. <coughs> Vertex. Well, once you've got the axis of symmetry, you can sub that in and uh, get the y value. And then, of course, you've got your, your vertex. Now, the y value is the minimum or the maximum of the, the function. So sometimes you'll see questions asking, hey, what's the maximum of this function? The maximum is not the coordinates of the vertex. The maximum is how high up. So what's the y value? 
Fuck, let's draw a simple one. X squared plus 8x plus 12. Now, of course, what I'm about to write down, we probably wouldn't write all this information down. I'm just doing it for the sake of an example. We look at this and we go, oh, look, A is a 1. That, that's positive. I know. I've got a concave up curve. So at least I know, right, oh, we, we're concave up. C is 12. So there's my y-intercept. I might plot that. There we go, there's 12. Uh, the zeros, well, let's solve our little equation here. Multiplies together to give 12, adds together to give eight, is of course six and two. So I get negative six, negative two. We'll plot those. Uh, the axis of symmetry. Well, now that I've got the zeros, I could find the average, or of course I could use minus b on 2a, that will work as well. So minus b on 2a, we get negative 4, which sure enough is the average of minus 6 and minus 2, so whichever way we want to do that. Now, I wouldn't normally draw in the axis of symmetry. Again, it's more for the sake of the, the example. There's our axis of symmetry. Uh, so let's find the vertex. Well, we now know the x value of the vertex is negative 4. Sub it in, and by an amazing coincidence, it also turns out to be negative 4. This is where I just have a word of warning. The x value and the y value, not always the same, okay? Not always, just, just a coincidence. All right, so let's plot minus four, minus four. There it is. And that's probably enough to get a, a nice parabola. There we go. Y equals x squared plus 8x plus 12. Yes, I know, it was impressive. I'm... <laughs> okay. Suppose they ask us this. So we're finding a quadratic, in this case, uh, a function. Uh, but the roots are 3 and 6. How do we do it? Bingo. Done. Whoa. Now, of course, I could have said, hey, if the solutions are 3 and 6, the roots are 3 and 6, yes, I know it's going to be x minus 3 times x minus 6 and expand that whole thing out. But there is a quicker way. 6 times 3 is 18. Remember, you normally go through the process that says, hey, what multiplies together to give this number? Well, the answer is 6 and 3, so that number must be 6 times 3. And then we normally say, hey, what adds together to give the middle number. But you notice I took the negative, because of course when you factorise, you go x minus three, which means the answer is plus three. It's always gonna be, the answer will be the negative of that. So it'll be minus the six plus three. And so that's the quick way of looking at it and going bingo. Now I've put an A out the front, because of course it could be any multiple times that would also have those solutions. Now, where that's useful is something like this. Say we didn't get nice, neat integers. We got 3 plus root 2 and 3 minus root 2. Sure, I could go x minus 3 minus root 2, x minus 3 plus root 2, expand the whole thing up. But if I use this idea, it's a lot quicker because multiply together, oh, they're conjugates, difference of two squares. So 9 minus 2 is 7. Add them together, well, again, because they're conjugates, the square root part disappears, and I'll get 3 plus 3 is 6, but it's the negative of that, so I get x squared minus 6x plus 6. Notice I didn't put a constant out the front, because they have said monic. Monic means coefficient of x squared is 1. Now, they've told me the roots are 2 and 8, but they've also given me some more information. The vertex is 5, 3. Right, so I'll use the same idea. I know it's going to be some multiple. Uh, multiply them together, I get 16. Add them together, I get 10, so it's negative 10. But now I can actually work out what the multiple is because they've given me additional information. I know that when x is 5, y is 3. So if I substitute those values in, a uh, little bit of calculation, we get a is negative a third. So our one must be, well, I've left it factorised rather than multiply everything by negative a third, but negative a third times x squared minus 10x plus 16. We talked about this before, but just to recap, quadratic inequalities, or in equation, I should say, quadratic inequation. Factorise it. You can think of it like what it's saying is, hey, when is this parabola above the x-axis? So I would draw it in. Whoop, there we go. And I can say, oh, look, it's above there. But I'm only interested in the x values. 
So the x values would be x is less than negative 3, x is greater than negative 2. Personally, I don't like negative x squareds. It just confuses me. But the beautiful thing about equations is it doesn't matter because I can multiply by negative 1. But of course, if I change the sign, I change the sign. So this will become x squared plus 3x minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. So this time, well, depending on which one I want to look at, if I'm looking at my new factorized one, I'm saying, hey, when is that parabola below? This time the points are included. And I'm below, in between, in between. But remember, when you're solving a quadratic, it's either going to be in between the two points or on the outside of the two points. So of course, another way you can do it is just substitute a value and see where you are. Are you in between or are you on the outside? Okay, so 8a we shall play with 